The first king of Israel, Saul, was no ordinary man. When we read in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 9, we learn that his father, Kish, was a very mighty man, a powerful and influential leader. And when we read further, we also learn that Saul himself is regarded in the Bible as one of the most handsome men that lived in Israel at that time. Not only that, Saul was actually taller than all the men in Israel. The Bible says he was so tall that all the men in Israel, assuming the tallest of them all, was somewhere around his shoulder height. Saul, if we could put it that way, was a giant of a man. But then fast forward 1 Samuel chapter 17. Another giant is in the scene. His name is Goliath of Gath, and he wants to challenge the Israelites. He has a very impressive armor, but so does Saul. When Saul gives his armor to David, we know that Saul, the king, is also very well armored. So here we are, a giant for a giant, a very well armored king, and a very well armored giant. Then the question is, why didn't Saul fight Goliath? See, when we read the story of Saul, one of the things you will realize very early is that Saul was a man who was troubled by fear. He tended to be very afraid and he tended to panic when he was afraid. So how did it happen that an ordinary size of a boy ended up fighting a giant like Goliath when the king of Israel himself was a giant? Should the king not have fought? Who else in Israel was physically and in terms of position the one best able to fight Goliath? It was King Saul. But it's not King Saul who did the fighting. David did the fighting. See my dear friends, one of the things we need to learn about fear is that fear will cause you to doubt and even fail to use the gifts, the tools, the talents and the blessings that God has given us. Saul was the right man to fight Goliath, but Saul was afraid. And so in his fear, his height, his strength helped no one. In his fear, his handsomeness and well-built physique assisted no one. In his fear, somebody else, somebody smaller, had to step in. One of the things we need to realize about fear is that fear will cripple the gifts that God has given us. Fear has a target. The target is for us to never believe that we are able. You see, fear always knows what we are capable of. Fear is aware of what God has put in you and has put in me. Fear knows what we could achieve if we really lived up to the investment that God has put in us. And so fear has to arrive. Fear has to arrive sometimes before we even realize just how gifted and blessed we are. Sometimes, while we already know that we are gifted and blessed, fear will arrive and cause us to doubt that we are gifted and cause us to doubt that we have these capabilities and these blessings. King Saul, was built for this battle. From his mother's womb, Saul was shaped for this moment. But when the moment came, fear 
disqualified him. So many of us are afraid. And the thing that I want to remind you today is that you are afraid because you are capable. You are afraid precisely because God has given you the abilities. You are the right giant. You have the right armor. You've got the right appearance. You and I, we have what it takes to fight and to win. But what fear will try and do is to disqualify us, to make sure that come what may, we never believe that we are able. And so it was, the mighty, well-built giant of a king never rose to this moment. It could have been for himself, his finest moment, one of those moments from which everyone would have remembered as we remember it with David. The songs that went to David were the songs that could have gone to King Saul. The praises of David are the praises that Saul could have received. But unfortunately, the mighty king, the well-built giant of a king, he was not so strong when it came to facing his fears. So many of us, we have fears. The first thing I am mentioning to all of us is fear only comes to those who have the capacity to do. If you do not have the capacity, you would not even be bothered. The reason why you are afraid the reason why something in you says try and then something else says stop. The reason why every time you think about doing it, you also write a longer list why not to do it, is precisely because you are capable. You see, people who are not capable are not burning with the dream to do what they are not capable of doing. There's a reason why you and I are feeling like our lives are incomplete, like we are not living to our fullest potential, like there is something more that is missing. It is precisely because we are able. And because fear, which comes from the evil one, knows we are able, he has invested everything in making us doubt that God has actually prepared us for such a time as this. People who don't want to employ others and change economies, they are not bothered about resigning from work and starting their own business. That's not their dream. They are satisfied where they work and we thank God for that. But the reason you are dissatisfied the reason you are not sleeping at night, the reason you keep taking one step forward and two steps back is precisely because in you lies the power to put bread in so many families' tables. In you lies the ability to do so much more that could change your economy. There's a reason why sometimes you think about going into politics and you burn with anger and you have so many solutions in your mind when you look at what is happening in your country it is precisely because you are able you see what is burning in us is the fire that says you were born to be a giant you are able to be a giant and you are armored for this by God However, fear will do everything it can to make sure we only ended up as a plan, a could have been, a might have been, but a never was or is. King Saul, what a well-built man. What a mightily well-structured soldier. 
what a well armored king. On top of that, what a pedigree. A son of a warrior father. A father who himself is called a mighty man of power. Yet this king, when the time came to fight a, an adversary, an enemy, an opposition, which he was built for, unfortunately, he was found not to use any of the gifts that he had been given. My dear friends, let me tell you, fear is working very hard to make us doubt the capabilities that God has given us. We experience it in many different ways. Fear will even ask you the questions, what will people say? Are you really going to walk away from this? Do you know how people have suffered when they've tried to do this? Do you know how many people have lost because they tried this? We've heard it. You are not going to survive as a pastor without the church's salary. Standing on your own, running your own ministry, never going to work. We've heard it. Getting married, you don't even have a background of a happy marriage in your family. Where do you think you are going? Resigning from work? Leaving job security? These are the things that we hear. However, remember, there's a reason why people don't believe we can do it. It is not the dream that burns within them. It is not what God had made them for. They have their own things where they too are afraid, yet they are the right giant to fight that enemy. You and I, we also need to understand there's a reason there is something in us that seems dissatisfied. We were born for something, built as a giant for it, made handsome for its appearance, and certainly we have the body for it. And my challenge to you today is that you would take time, remember you were made for it. You are fit for it. God has prepared you for it. And the only reason why we are afraid is because fear is afraid of what we could be if we lived up to what God wants us to be. So if you are telling me right now, you are afraid, then here's the answer from the word of God. You were built a giant you were given the appearance of a conqueror. You were given the armor of a king. You are not afraid because you are incapable. You are afraid simply because fear is afraid of you when you are at your fullest potential. To conquer fear, trust the abilities that God has given you. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will guide your path. That is what we mean. Trust him who has built you. Trust him who has invested in you. Trust him who has made us fit for purpose. May God bless you. May you understand the fear you have is for the potential that God has given you. Live up to it.